Not inspiring too much fabulous today. Hey, it's Care. Welcome to my take at the lake. We are doing a clean and craft chat. Meaning, I'm gonna clean this nightmare of a mess again. And we're gonna chat about crafts. Not my uncle's sister's boyfriend who needed an operation. Not my kid's teacher's sister's cousin who broke a hip. We're gonna talk about crafts and we're gonna just chit chat. What I'm doing here is I've gone through all of my magazines that I've been collecting and people have been collecting for me. I had a bin and if you were paying attention, I said, if it doesn't fit in this bin, it can't stay. Well, I had a whole bunch that I had gone through, but planned to go through again and again and again, because as we've seen with Harvested Mag Swap, uh, you can get a lot, a lot of stuff out of Harvested Magazines. But I had gone through them and gone through them and I'd marked them. And those were all in that bin. But people kept giving me and I kept buying more and more and more magazines. Well, it's too much. So I've taken the ones that were in the bin that I marked and I pulled all of those things out and I put them in this other bin. These are all the things that I had marked for future reference in my old magazines. I'll just show you. Here are my new magazines as well as all of these. This pack, this pile, this pile, way over there, that pile. What I did with this round of magazines is I went through all of them that I'm going to keep that will fit in that bin and I've organized them by season. Spring, summer, fall, and winter. I happen to hoard Walmart and Meyer bags and so I just labeled this one winter and if it's holiday related or winter related, it is in here. The stack that I showed you here on the chair are all season. They're things like fashion magazines or health magazines and even though they may be issued in the fall, they have nothing to do with the season. So there's a lot of just general stuff. And so that's how the books are, magazines are going to be organized by season. So when it's Easter or when it's springtime and I have the hankering to do a spring glue book or a spring project, I don't have to go through all of my magazines. I can just pull out the springtime bag. I think because there's so many, I will double bag these because I have plenty. So let me grab a couple bags, more bags. Oh wait, I much prefer higher bags because they're stronger. They don't come with holes in them usually. They're a little bit bigger, a little bit stronger. I may have already said that. I am not paying attention to what I am saying. I hope maybe you are. So I'm going to double bag these because there's a lot. And when I put them in the bin, I'll put them in the order. So spring will be first. So it should be easy access. It's always my goal is easy access because if I can't get to it, I won't use it. Speaking of that, uh, I am gutting this room. I am over the junk and junk journals. I may have said this before, but I have had it with all the junk that one has to have for junk journaling. I love junk journaling. I'm going to keep the stuff for the projects I already have going. I'm going to keep the stuff that I can easily store, but the rest is going. I'm going to put it on my Facebook marketplace. A whole bunch of junk journal supplies. I am not shipping thrifted books, etc. Um, I still have, because I never did put it on Etsy, the junk journal starter kits, the stash refresher kits. I still have those. I don't have any more glue book book uh, bags anymore. Uh, those, those 
went away. If you are interested, and I will link the video below to show you what's all in the Stash Refresher Kit and the Junk Journal Starter Kit, still laying here from a previous video, my book of unwasted watercolor paints. I have not been around for a little while because I took a little bit of time off for my birthday, which was at the end of June. Uh, and that, of course, bled into the holiday weekend, and that just bled into this week. Kind of like skipping school, you know. The longer you skip school, the harder it is to go back. <laughs> so if you didn't see the previous video, this is all about unwasted paint. I will link that video below, but I haven't put that stuff away yet. Usually in these clean and craft chats, I chat about whatever is on my desk or some ideas that I have that don't necessarily get their own video. I bought my friend and I this wonderful book. It's a Piccadilly book, and soon I'm going to do a flip through of my Piccadilly book collection. I just love these books. There's all different kinds. PiccadillyInc.com. I get them at Meyer. I notice now Walmart is starting to carry one or two of them. But I found this one on my bookshelf, not here in the studio, but on my regular bookshelf. It's called 100 Life Challenges, and the idea is... Um, spend time coloring spend 30 days coloring and it tells you how to do it and why to do it how to carve out the time i just thought it'd be fun and and it's beautiful it's watercolory and it and it's rainbowy and it's kind of tie-dye ish and i just love it but i've had it for i don't know several years now and I've only done I think I've had it since 2019 I believe uh, my best friend and I our birthday is about a week apart and so I got us these for our birthday in 2019 and I've not really done anything with it but I love these trackers it doesn't have to be a sweat tracker because when you tear the page out, I pick a very good, well, I, I did pick a good one. This should come out easy if you do it right. Now it's just a tracker. It can track anything. You could tuck this into any sort of, any sort of journal, a bullet journal, a planner, a, a glue book, anything that you want to track, you can now track. There's a hundred of these in this book. So even though you might not want to take a daily walk every day for 30 days without your phone, I would say keep the phone, just shut it off so that you can have your private time but remain safe. So I have an Apple Watch that when I go out for a walk, it has its own phone line. I can text for help. I can dial 911 if I want, but I don't have to carry my phone. Bird walk. Welcome to my channel. But I am going to tear, I'm going to put this on my, my shelf for harvesting and use these. They're just gorgeous colors. And anytime I want a tracker and I can track anything I want. These last several in the back are blank trackers. You can do whatever you want. Come up with your own quote, your own instructions. I just love this book. Love, love, love this book for a number of reasons. Love it enough to have kept it, but didn't do it. That happens. And that's okay. It's perfectly okay. On my Piccadilly books, I will tell you this again. When I show you my Piccadilly collection, some of them I've had for several years, and I'm just now doing them, and I am loving it. So stay tuned to the channel for that. Make sure you're subscribed, please, and hit that notification bell because uh, I notice uh, myself and a lot of other YouTubers have said that for some reason, the views have gone way down. I mean, they always go down in the summer, but not like this. So for some reason, the algorithm's not pushing the videos out. And if you don't know enough about YouTube to go looking to my channel for the video. You won't know that it's out there unless you hit the, sub the subscribe and the notification bell.
So I have been organizing mom and me play dates for a while now. I, you know, a lot of times when we get together, it's either with our extended family, which is great. You know, we play games and we sit on the porch and we eat junk food or whatever, but, or another, other times when I get together with my mom, we're, we're doing chores or I'm doing tech support or we're, I don't know, doing miscellaneous life work. And I want us to just play. She's an artist. She's a crafts person. She's always been into arts and crafts. I've been trying to get her into glue booking. I think she would love it. Um, and so the last couple of our mom and me craft dates have been harvesting, tearing up magazines. And she seems to really like that. But for whatever reason, the last one we did, I was not in the mood for glue booking, which is unusual because I love to glue book. But I was in the mood to do something else. And I have a whole bunch of these little, their, their coffee, instant coffee packets because, you know, I quit drinking coffee a long time ago and switched. First I did half coffee, half tea, excuse me, half coffee, half green tea in one cup. And that worked for a while, and then I just went to green tea, and I stopped drinking coffee. Well, once in a while, it just has to be coffee. And so I got myself several boxes of these. I didn't want to go full on back to coffee. Last Mom and Me play date, I collaged all of them. Now, all of these are Folgers boxes. I just took my shoe box full of vintage colored scraps because... The last time I reorganized my studio, I organized it by color. Vintage, which are the browns, blacks, creams, tans, ivories, anything that looks old fashioned -y. Black and white or color. And so I've got bins of vintage papers and whatnot. And so these are just scraps. The inside of the Folgers thing is already craft, so you don't have to do much to it, especially on a vintage project because, yay, we love craft. I love these little guys because they already have a spine. So all you do is take the box apart. There's always a little seam. I just run my thumb down that seam and it opens up. It, usually all you have to do is cut off that piece or you can leave it that makes a nice little pocket and it already again has a spine these are kind of you know they're little you don't have to reinforce that but you could if you wanted to and i just wanted to show you uh, all the different ones that i came up with some of my scraps were bigger than other pieces of my scraps so that's what that one looks like so the spine on this one got decorated as, as did the back. This uh, obviously is from a composition book, but it's coffee stained, so it's not quite so bright white. It's just coffee stained. This one was kind of a large scrap. That was pretty easy. This was a backdrop page uh, when I was doing other things, so there's pieces and bits from working on top of it. This is just little pieces. So, the spine. I love the different fonts, the newsprint, old book print, some script, some French, all kinds. Um, this is a large scrap, so that was easy, and that's what it looks like there in the spine. And then some vintage cooking. This, These pieces are from... When I bought my house, there was a 1950s oven stove in here, and it still had all the paperwork. And this this 1950s owner's manual of whatever kind of, I think it was a hot point oven, was still in my basement. And over the, over the last how many years, it got all vintagey. And I finally tore it up and did something with it. But all this is natural natural aging which is awesome dear homemaker so this one almost has to be a little tiny either 1950s journal or a cooking journal or a, 
a ladies journal of some sort. I just think it's so cute. I love little projects like this because they're not very intimidating. And if you look, it's not perfect. Nothing here is perfect. It doesn't have to be. And that just adds to the charm of these little guys. This one could be, I like to let the cover sometimes dictate what the what the theme of the journal is because having this is almost like a blank slate oh what do i fill it with what do i do with it oh my god there's so many choices well if i let the cover choose it could be a dragonfly journal it could be a vintage and green journal just old-fashioned this color um, army sort of green wouldn't that be pretty? Just craft paper, coffee dyed paper, and images that have this color green in it. That would be awesome. Could be old newspaper clippings too. It could be a field guide like birds and bugs and things like that. So there are all kinds of options. Don't fear the blank slate. Not one of them is perfect. The edges are not trimmed. The ones that I cut are not perfectly straight that's all all right it just adds to the charm i left one blank so you could see how they started and you don't have to have six of them you don't have to wait till you have six of them uh, this took a lot longer than i thought by the way i thought oh i'll just do this this will be quick it took the whole afternoon i wasn't rushing but it took longer than i thought uh, even though it was because you have to make you still have to make some decisions you know what to stick where and yeah, there were decisions to be made. I can't seem to just stick stuff on. There are, there are very popular junk journalers who just grab and stick, grab and stick. Shit is sideways. It's upside down. The purple's next to the burgundies. The blue's next to the oranges. I mean, no rhyme or reason. Vintage mixed with new, mixed with bright, black and white. I, I can't. I can't do it. So my process takes a little bit longer because I have to make some decisions when I'm doing it. Not necessarily. And, I, you know, I, I do like eclectic things. That's not to say eclectic isn't cool. I love eclectic. But there still has to be some design to it. Uh, some very, very popular people don't seem to have a clue about design. <laughs> like, good. who cares if it's six times bigger than the page? calls for i'd like to show you this that i got more international mail how fun is this this fun can you guess who it's from with the queen there i won i'm happy to say and this is very funny that i i often say you know this the saying great minds think alike i had i've i did these about a month or two ago i don't remember Mom and I have been busy doing other stuff, so we haven't had a play date in a really long time. But I did these a while ago, and I won Janet Nash's door prize on her live. Uh, during her live events on Monday, uh, Eastern Standard Time, 9 to 11 on every Monday, even when she's on vacation. Thank you, Janet, for taking us to the seaside. That was awesome. But she asked me if I wanted a journal card. I think she was making a journal card or an ATC and or a little journal. And I said, oh, I'd love a little journal. And so the little journal came in the mail. Same little kind of box, has its own little spine in it. And she, she just does the funnest things, I think. Um, I'll pull this little guy out, this little guy out. So this little, she decorated it with bits of fabric and of course, painted gold on there there's you can see she's she spat her gold in it because she does that so she did that on the box she left the flap like i talked about on this one you can certainly do that so it can just sit on the shelf like a box that is so cute so she didn't take it apart she just cut up one side and then she used some of her painty papers and here you can really see the gold it's light 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 green it is so pretty i'm thinking it's unwasted paint that she used and these are fold outs so even if your paper is a little bit too big 
for your journal, just fold it and you have these lovely fold outs. You see all the gold? Look how pretty that is. And there's the center of the signature and this cute, cute, cute little button sewn on two pieces of fabric. If I remember correctly, she did that because this chicken ended up upside down. Yep, there he is. I'm gonna I'm gonna expose the chicken because I remember watching her make this and she goes, oh, my chicken's upside down. Oh, that's okay. We'll just cover it up and put a button on it. What a lovely thing. Uh, can you see that? Beautiful. It's a safety pin with some beads, a sequin, and a tiny little leaf. So cute. And this fabric is just folded in between it and glued to the page. Simply sewn in. More she left these on for texture and and uh, visual texture as well as physical. Lots of gold paint, so cute. Inside here was some of her chicken fabric and some leftover scraps that match, you know, from the inside. So if I wanted to do page tabs or something, I could do that. To care with love from Janet, Freddie, and. Low. Also in here was this beautiful little card with a little Frenchie and a stack of books. Isn't he wonderful? He's so cute. And some paint. This looks like to be from Daphne's diary, I think. And then a nice dyed piece of old tea towel, I think. This almost looks like her, she did, um, ice dyeing on a hot summer day she took a whole bunch of I don't know if this is from that but she took a whole bunch of material and she watered it up with rubber bands and whatnot and she put it in a bowl of crushed ice and and then sprinkled dye powders all over the ice and in the hot sun as the ice melted it made these different dyes what a fun project to do on a hot summer day. Now I don't know that this is from that, but it sure looks like it. It's got the ring here and the, and the uh, oh, sort of starbursty kind of effect. I'm kind of muddled because I thought there was a, a steampunk dog, a steampunk Boston somewhere. Oh, he's here. I knew he was somewhere. There he is. This is this is the envelope, the back of the envelope that this goodie box came in. Uh, but if you'll see, it's it's a reused envelope, uh, statements enclosed. So it's from a bill. Painty papered it and collaged over it. Beautiful happy mailbox, post box, Van Gogh's beautiful flowers, bright and beautiful. Some original designs, some plant drawings from Janet. Yeah, well, she, she glued that on. So cute. And the last thing that was in there, wrapped up in this wonderful tie-dyed fabric, were these also coordinating. You know, that just, that just sends me uh, coordinated paper clips. Very simple torn bits of fabric folded in half stuck through a paper clip and either glued or sewn button sewn that's entirely optional but then i can take those beautiful buttons and it was all tied with this very pretty iridescent ribbon i can take these beautiful paper clips to my little journal and they just add such a nice i could put them on the side i could Put it on this closure. So fun. I just think they're adorable. And there's three of them. Those are easy things you can do with tiny bits of torn fabric and paper clips. Great couch craft, comfort craft, gentle journaling craft. All, all of the above would work. I also have pulled my beautiful collection of markers out of the drawers and put them into mason jars by color because I find that I don't use them because they're not out. So I, I put them out, A, because I love to see all the color, but now they're, they're right 
here. They're right here. So I have no excuse not to use them instead of being closed away in their box, neatly organized by color in their box. I just never use them. Now they're out. I hope to use them more. I've been collecting and collecting for Colors Glue Book, and I love the primaries, the brights. Uh, then you come across things like this. I have a succulent glue book going that I've been collecting for. I haven't started it yet, but all succulents. Do I put this in there? It matches these colors quite nicely, although they're a little bit muted. Do, what do I do? I don't know. I'm just going to put them all in one and I'll figure it out. But I'm collecting anything that are these four bright colors, the primaries plus green. So I'm also organizing truckloads of images because I've been harvesting all those crazy magazines for so long. The good news is, is I'm t reclaiming my studio. The good news is I'm getting rid of a lot of stuff. So again, if you want a junk journal starter kit, they're 20 bucks. Uh, that covers the stuff inside them and the $11 tracked insured shipping. I don't want any surprises at the mailbox, so I just use envelopes that are one size fits all. It's $11 no matter how much stuff is in it, and I have crammed as much stuff as I could possibly cram into the, into the bag so that they'll go through the post. If you want one of those, drop me a comment below and then send me an email at my take at the lake at gmail.com and I will get one out to the mail to you. Do it in the next week or two. Today is uh, July 10th. Hopefully this will be out in the next couple of days because I'm selling it. If, if you want one, get them now because I'm getting rid of them all. I'm not having them in my house anymore. So let me know in the comments below and then send me an email at my take at the lake at gmail.com. Uh, I am also cleaning house figuratively. I want to streamline things here on the channel. I am working on some other big projects right now and so I need to make the My Take at the Lake stuff as simple and clean as possible so there may be some changes. You, you may or may not notice them. I don't know. I will keep you abreast, of course. I hope that you're having some fun crafting this summer or winter, wherever you are. Uh, and that you're taking time to explore your crafty side. I just recently, in the last couple of days, read a fabulous article about having a hobby or doing some sort of art or craft keeps your brain healthy. And I don't expect to live forever. I don't want to live forever. I want to age well, especially my brain. I see people I know and love all around me who are older than me by a good 20 plus years, cognitively declining. And it's painful for everyone around them. It's painful for them. And I don't want that. So anything I can do to keep my brain healthy, I'm going to do. And that means eating well and learning. Follow your curiosity. Keep learning. Learn and learn some more. And do something crafty. Have a hobby your brain and everyone who loves you will thank you for it. Go love up your bee sleeves because that is what they're here for. You're so smart. My take out of the lake. Out for now.